shovel the snow? Yes, dear. I hung the mistletoe. Did you shovel the snow banks? What? Snow banks. Oh, you're welcome. Donald, take off those headphones. What are you listening to? A uh, weather forecast. Looks like all the heavy snow is finally starting to move out. Oh, good. Then Aunt Joy should be able to get here with no trouble. My thoughts exactly. Oh, you got more dates from the store. Great. How can I forget? You've been reminding me for weeks. I thought they'd be good for our guests to snack on. Speaking of guests, they should be arriving any moment. And everything needs to be perfect. Since they've rerouted the highway, business has been slower than ever. And remember, these people coming in are loaded, so we can charge them what we used to charge when everybody wanted to stay here. <laughs> it looks like everything is in order, except, Donald, I thought I asked you to cut a Christmas tree. Oh, I did. It, it's right over there. Where? In the corner. All I see is mounted fish. What? Fish. Yes, dear. You're still a dish. <laughs> Donald, are you telling me this is the tree you cut for the lodge? Well, what's wrong with it? It'll, it'll look charming once we put a few decorations on it. Once we put decorations on it, it will die. This is the puniest Christmas tree I've ever seen. What will our rich weekend guests say when they see this tiny little shrub? What? Never mind. I'll deal with this later. I need to finish the decorations in the hall. Donald, can you go check on the hot chocolate in the kitchen, please? Whatever you say, sweet thing. It's, it's real nice. Mountain bass, deer antlers, makes me feel like I'm back in Cookie County. Shut that door, boy. Bring them back, bring them back. Y'all get yourself in here, you two heifers. Shut that door. But, Are you raise the barn? But, Hurry, boy, the heat gets out. Grandma says to get in here right now. I was trying to, you knucklehead. And shut that door! <laughs> Goodness gracious alive! Every last one of you, get in here. Why don't you shut the door in my face, Brenda May? Because Grandma told me to, Brenda May. Both of you, hush up when I break off a hickory switch. Yeah, both of y'all hush up right now. You be quiet, Fester. I'm still mad at you for calling me ugly in the car. Yeah, especially when you got a face that can split kindling. Grandma, she's making fun of me. And that hush up goes for you too, Fester Taylor. Well, well, if I'm ugly, then you're... You're you better watch it. You look like you was hit with an ugly stick. Fester, you apologize this instant. Well, okay, you wasn't hit with an ugly stick. That's much better. You got the whole tree. <laughs> let's try for a little peace and quiet, shall we? We finally made it to Colorado, so let's enjoy it. Grandma Taylor, you must be tired. Why don't you come over here and sit down? Leave me be, child. I've been sitting for hours and my body's numb from the waist down. Well, if you need anything, and I do mean anything at all, you be sure and let me know. You sweet old thing, you! And quit that yelling in my ear. I keep telling you, I ain't hard hearing. It's, it's been a long trip. Uh, how about let's all just enjoy a, a good little Christmas here in the mountains? Well, at least you didn't have to spend all time in the backseat with Bubba May and Ellie Sue. My poor Fifi will never be the same again. Well, we, if we would have flown the way I suggested, everyone wouldn't be irritated. And I have told you more than a million times. I am never stepping foot in those aeroplanes. Yes, ma'am. We'll get settled in and relax. I can't wait to hit the slopes tomorrow. I wonder you, where you can rent skis around here. Yeah, we spend a lot of money getting up here. We may as well take full advantage of it. What do you mean we have 
spend a lot of money. It's my family that's paying for this here Christmas ski trip. And don't you forget it. Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to offend you. I mean, we appreciate your money. I mean, your inheritance. I mean, your generosity. Listen, I don't trust your side of the family. Any president I can throw you. Uh, Grandma Taylor, you can trust us. We promise. Yeah, Grandma Taylor, you can trust them. By the way, can you make a noise like a frog? Why would I do a thing like that? Well, because Cousin Oswald said, when you croak, we can go to Hawaii. Oh. <laughs> Glenn May, you must have misunderstood. She didn't misunderstand, you selfish city kid. You ain't nothing but greedy little snakes in the grass. And like we say in the country, you're going to buy a rainbow, don't pay cash. And don't you youngins ever forget it. Now wonder if we can get some sleep around here. Yeah, well, this is going to be one fun trip. Is my little Fifi tired? Oh, yes, he is, yes, he is. <coughs> you're here, you're here, you're all here. Gracious, what are you doing here? Who's asking? Well, my name is Sabrina Rainey, and my husband and I own this quaint little ski lodge. We've had some very important people who have stayed here over the years. Well, ain't we a pity? I own a big camp, but you don't hear me bragging about it. Now, Grandma Taylor, she's with us. I see. You'll have to, you'll have to excuse her. She's had a rather rough trip. Oh, bad flight? We drove. My, but that's such a long way. It's better than crashing to the ground. Oh, on the contrary. Did you know that flying is much safer than driving? In New York City alone, a man is hit by a car every 30 minutes. I bet he's getting pretty sore by now. <laughs> I think I'll ignore that. Allow me to make introductions. This is my brother Pete and my cousin Mimi on our mother's side. On our father's side, this is Fester, Brenda May, and Glenda May Taylor, and their grandmother, Miss Emma Jean Taylor. Yep, they're the ones who inherited Uncle Zeke's uh, oil well, coal, and dynamite a few years back. Yeah, that they call us milky hairs. That's millionaires, dummy. You'll have to excuse him, ma'am. You can take the boy out of the country, but you can't take the country out of the boy. Has anyone seen my snow? Depends on what the cup said to me first. <laughs> Perhaps we should get settled in if that's okay with you, Miss Rainey. Uh, I think that's a good idea. Here are your keys. Your rooms are right through that door. Once you all get unsettled, get packed and everything, you can head right back in, the, in this room for orientation. Calls me Oz for short, you know, as in wizard. Uh, my name is Sabrina Rainey. You can call me Mrs. Rainey, you know, as in I'm married. Ooh. See you around. <laughs> Here we go, Gramps. You got into the eggnog again. Now, Gramps, that eggnog is for our guests. I do wish Aunt Joy would hurry and get here. You can relax in here, okay? Until Aunt Joy comes to pick you up and take you home. What? Joy! Joy! Oh! Joy to the world! <laughs> the Lord is come. Everybody sing! We'll sing later, Gramps. What? 
Later. Trade her? Good luck on your swap. <laughs> Donald, now you know how I felt with you earlier. Here, Gramps, let me turn your hearing aid up. Is that better? Why are you yelling at me? I'm not deaf. <laughs> Donald, you deal with him. Gramps, we were just saying you can relax in here until Aunt Joy gets here to pick you up. I don't want to go back to that other little folks' home, and you can't make me. We've been all through this before, Gramps. You're going back today, and that's that. I don't know why I can't spend Christmas here with you this year. You're the only family I have left. There just isn't enough room now that our guests are here. Besides, you'd be much happier spending Christmas with people your own age. Those people at the home are nothing but old fogies. I don't belong there. There he goes again, hinting that we should let him stay here for Christmas. No, now Donald, like I've told you before, this business is very important to us. And though he may not mean to, Gramps and his walker will scuff up my expensive antique furniture. You're right. Besides, riding back with Aunt Joy will cheer him up. She always cheers him up. No, she doesn't. She gets on my nerves with all that idle prattle. Yak, yak, yak. I forgot we put new batteries on his hearing aid. You deal with him. He's all yours. I've got to go tackle that driveway. Now, Gramps, remember not to make trouble. Gramps? This business is very important to us, so stop being stubborn. Cheat me like a child, would you? Dear Lord, I have but one request to ask you this Christmas. Could you please arrange it so that I could spend Christmas here with my family this year? Amen. Ooh look at that snow falling out there. I'll just close these curtains, keep the draft down. There we go. Well, 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 who do we have here? You must be the glo you must be the reason for global warming, cause you're hot. <laughs> about it. Well, what do we have here? Did you say something? I was just looking at this great fancy greenery. I wonder what it is. They call it mistletoe. Mistletoe, huh? I wonder why they have it hanging from the ceiling like that. I'll show you. You will? Be gentle, Gizzard. on what the cup said to me first. That's right. I forgot. What do you have there? Uh, just this old guitar that I've had since I was a kid. Oh, do you know how to pick? Uh, yes, ma'am, but my mama taught me not to do it in public. <laughs> I mean, can you play the guitar? Does a grizzly bear have claws? <laughs> Oh dear, that was atrocious. 
Well, thank you very much. Can you believe I've only been playing this thing for one year? Yes. Yes, I can. <laughs> now, what happened to that mistletoe I hung? Is it not where you left it? Well, no, it isn't. It must be gone. Well, thanks for clearing that up. You're welcome. We're all unpacking everything. Oh, Hi, Glenda May. I'm Brenda May. She's Glenda May. Yeah, don't worry. Everybody makes that mistake with identical twins. Oh, oh but you look nothing alike. <coughs> hmm. Maybe it's Chinese twins. I keep forgetting. Anyway, what way you go skiing? <laughs> well, you know, we can't ski without orientation. Well, she better hurry up if she's going with us. Who? Orientation. You don't understand. Orientation is training. What's she training for? Orientation is not a she. Okay, well then what's he training for? Orientation is training you. Not if he don't hurry up. Uh, I feel a headache coming on. Why don't we just decorate the tree? Okay. Hey, Fester, play us something on your guitar. Yeah, me and, me and Brenda May will help Miss Romy decorate the Christmas tree. It's rainy. No, ma'am. It's snowy. <laughs> oh, snow. And playing songs, Christmas carols on this old guitar and decorating the, the tree? It's already beginning to feel like an old-fashioned Christmas. Miss Romy, where's, where's the tree? You're standing beside it. No, ma'am, it ain't here. You're holding it. That thing I cut down be weeds bigger than that thing. <laughs> now, Glenda May, remember what we say in the country. Beauty is only skin deep, but ugly is to the bone. Mm -hmm. <laughs> here, why don't you start by wrapping this garland around it? Okay. Won't orientation be surprised when he gets here and the tree is all decorated? Can't guess what that was, Miss Raincoat. Of course she can. Can't you, Miss Rankin? It's rainy. Uh, no, no, she, she was. No. no. Okay, try again. Play it slower this time, Fester, and we'll sing along. Christmas time's coming. Christmas time's coming. Christmas time's coming. Everybody down and show me going home. Christmas time's coming. Miss Rudy, it's your turn today. Christmas time's coming, and we'll be going home. Christmas time's coming. I think that's enough Christmas cheer for now. Fester, how about a date? Okay, but what would your husband say? About what? About you offering me a date? Well, it was his idea. No, no ma'am, I better not. Why? Are you allergic? Uh, no, I, I'm a Baptist. And no frown on such stuff as that. Miss Romy, what would your husband say if he was here right now? Well, he would say, Glenda May, would you like a date? And I would say, turn him down flat, no, no, no. And so would my sister. Right, Glenda May? Mm -hmm. Glenda May, I'm thinking. Oh, Lord, please forgive my sister. She knoweth not what she saith. And please give Fester the strength to say no to this here Jezebel tonight. -ed. Excuse me, but what is she doing? She is praying for your soul. But why? Because you, a married woman, asking me, a good-looking, rugged mountain man, out on a date? And Lord, please forgive her. And please don't turn her into a salt shaker. <laughs> no, Fester.
Mister, you don't understand. A date is a fruit. See? Oh, it's all right, Brenda May. She ain't no Jezebel. Thank you, Lord. That was quick. Amen. <laughs> Right after I find something for this migraine, why don't we get everybody back here for orientation? Okay, but I say if he ain't here, we just start without him. Cause like we say in the country, if you come to a fork in the road, pick it up. <laughs> <laughs> um, excuse me, Fester? Uh -huh. Would you be kind enough to go out front and cut me a sprig of mistletoe from the tree? Does a snake slither? I'll be right back. Christmas time's coming, Christmas time. Oh, my aching head. And where did that 